So we've got nav AQ up or AQ nav up AQ and nav. running. Um, yeah. I, I want to move the conversation if we could to another yeah. another quantum sensor in the magnetic field space, which is what you're doing in the field of medicine, which a lot of folks are are sincerely interested in. Would you go yeah. there? Sure. So the same principle of detecting the magnetic fields and having an AI that could read the sensor, look at the signal and ignore the noise, right? That's the critical signal to noise ratio that we always talk about. We can bring this right back to earth in hospitals, in clinics, at the bedside, in ambulances and in preventative and also even in sports and performance medicine. Mm. We can bring it to one of the uh, key medical challenges of our time, which is cardiac care. Uh, as we all know, Peter, um, I think all our listeners know here, uh, heart attacks, cardiac disease, generally speaking, is the number one killer in the United States. For both men and women, Europe. for both men and women, just to be clear, yeah. this is not yeah. a male focused disease. That's right. It's absolutely both for men and women. And uh, what's absolutely clear is that uh, around the world, it is the, the leading killer. Uh, it is a silent killer very often coming out with almost uh, no warning signs, you know, well ahead of time. And we know that our current diagnostic tools fall short. How many times do we know in our experiences um, with, with friends, family, colleagues, that unfortunately we hear about somebody that had a great uh, physical, was given an A plus in their physical three months later, heart attack. Yeah, can, I, can I double down on this? <clears throat> the numbers, which I know are 70% of all heart attacks have no precedence, no symptoms, no shortness of breath, no pain. In fact, you can have a zero calcium score <clears throat> um, where you know, your calcified plaque is actually sort of like cement on the side of the arteries, but isn't blocking your coronary artery, denying the heart tissue oxygen. If it's stable, it's fine. It is the inflammatory, the, the soft plaque that can evolve, can break out in the middle of the night um, and, and block the supply of of blood and oxygen glucose to the heart and give you a heart attack. So does, does your AQ med help detect that? So here's what, yeah, so here's what happened. We realized that the magnetic field uh, is something that we can now detect, not just of the earth, like we just discussed, but also of the body. And it turns out that every time you have electricity, what Faraday, what Michael Faraday taught us uh, back in the 1800s is that every time you have an electric field, you have a magnetic field. That's mm -hmm. the way physics works. And so we know that we have electric pulses in our heart. Most of us still have our natural electric pulses. Those who lose that capability, of course, have a pacemaker, and a pacemaker artificially makes that happen. But um, talking about the heart, uh, we have these uh, signals that go in. Why do we have this electric signal? So that we can contract the heart. The heart is a muscle, like any muscle in our body. It contracts. When it contracts, of course, it's spurting the blood out, and we go around and Hopefully, people are also thinking about their second heart. Their second heart are our calf muscles. I hope people are working out their calf muscles because we need <laughs> those calf muscles to get that blood back up. So please work out your calf muscles to get that blood back up from not pooling in your- Your, in your, your venous blood. return. Your venous yes. return. Yes. So we have muscles in our body. When I'm moving my finger right now, my brain is sending a signal uh, to this muscle to contract. That's an actually, actually, the muscle the muscle is bound here, but that's okay. Yeah, you know I'm saying, but it's any muscle here, but to contract yeah. here. Yes. Um, and and so uh, what we can do is we can pick up the magnetic field associated with the electricity of the heart. And in fact, we can go beyond ECG, EKG. ECG, as it's called uh, in most of the world, EKG is what we call it in America, in the United States, is electrocardiography. And as you mm -hmm. well know, Peter, um, uh, this is really a very indirect kind of way of looking at the heart. What are we looking at? We're putting pads with wires on people's chests. So mm. we're looking at skin conductance, okay, uh, right? So skin conductance, uh, but now we're really interested in an organ that is inside the body cavity beyond mm. the bone and tissue of the skin, beyond that. And in fact, uh, it is a very poor indicator of exactly what's going on inside the heart. You can tell some things, of course, uh, and actually I have a glass right here. I don't know if people can see it but it yes. has all the EKG symbols, uh, the wa various waveforms on it. And it tells you about NSRs and tachycardia, bradycardia, P PVC, A flutter, AFib, STEMI. So I always keep this near me. And that's um, the PQRS complex. Yes, yes, in case I have to um, uh, interpret it a EKG at any moment. <laughs> um, 
but uh, but in fact, in fact, there, there's a form of heart attack that we call anstemi. What does anstemi mean? Well, STEMI is ST, elevated myocardial infarction, STEMI, and the S and T, we give letters to, as you know, Peter, to the various parts of the waveform. And so a STEMI heart attack, we can see on an ECG, but NSTEMI, by definition, non-ST elevated myocardial infarction, we cannot see on the EKG because there is no elevation. There's no elevation of the waveform. So what do we do? Well, it turns out years ago, people realized that the magnetic field of the heart is richer in information. It comes out intact, just like you talked about, Peter, during our AQ-NAV conversation, that the magnetic field goes through the oceans. We can detect it underwater, above water, here, there, in the earth, above the earth, inside the earth. It is, it is everywhere. The same thing with our heart's magnetic field as well. And so if we can pick up the magnetic field of the heart, we can actually detect far more than the indirect skin conductance of the EKG. And that's actually what's now happened 